Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins, for the intentions of all my relatives and friends, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. Let us pray for the intentions of the Holy Father for the month of October. For the Synod, we pray for the Church that she may adopt listening and dialogue as a lifestyle at every level and allow herself to be guided by the Holy Spirit towards the peripheries of the world. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, as we enter in the presence of the Lord, as we begin this new day, let us take a few moments to thank the Lord for all that He has done for us. We see that right from the time of our birth till now, there have been many instances or events where the Lord has worked wonders in our lives. He has guided us, He has protected us, he has shown us the way, helped us to overcome challenges and difficulties. And in this way, we can identify Him guiding us all through our lives. But there are occasions wherein we find it difficult to recognize His presence among us. We find it difficult to identify the blessings and the graces. And here we see that it is in these occasions that we need to specially ask the Lord to give us the grace that we may be able to identify those graces, those blessings in our lives. And therefore we see that the first thing to do is to be grateful to the Lord for all that He has done. And therefore, as we begin today's morning prayer, let us begin on this note of gratitude. Let us ask the Lord to help us identify His presence in our lives. And therefore, let us begin by thanking the Lord for all the things that He has done for us. Lord, we thank You for the gift of life. We thank You for giving us talents, opportunities and various gifts that enable us to become better persons and also that enable us to reach out to others and make a difference in the lives of others. Lord, we also want to thank you for the gift of our family members, friends, relatives, near and dear ones and all those who play a very important role in our lives. We see that it is these people who 
who have been instrumental in making us who we are. They are the ones who have devoted their time, energy and effort. And as a result of it, they have molded us and they have made us better individuals. So today, Lord, in a very special way, we ask you to bless all their endeavors and give them all the graces that they may require in life. We also thank you, Lord, for giving us the gift of this day, a day that would help us in many ways to appreciate the good things that you have done for us, a day wherein we may complete some thing that was left behind or a day that may present to us various challenges. Whatever be the situation, Lord, we ask you to be with us and guide us. Allow us to be led by you. Lord, we also thank you for the opportunities, for the experiences that you have given us in life. There have been many experiences wherein we have enjoyed and these are the experiences that we want to cherish in life. But this, at the same time, there have also been those experiences and those moments wherein we have found it difficult to accept them. These are the experiences that have been learning experiences. They have taught us a lot in life. Though they may have been hard, bitter, but still they have given us a valuable lesson. They have made us stronger. And therefore, Lord, we also thank you for those moments which have helped us to become strong, which have helped us to become better individuals. And Lord, we also thank you for giving us opportunities to reach out to others, to make use of our talents. And thus, Lord, we ask you to be with us, guide us throughout this day. Lord, allow us to be led by you so that whatever we do, our actions, our words, may reflect your love, joy and mercy to the world around us. Help us to become your instruments so that you may work in and through us. And therefore now, my dear friends, let us all close our eyes at this moment and let us praise the Lord that he has woken us up in this morning. We thank him for the good health that he has given us, for the good night's rest. We thank him for keeping us safe and sound, for protecting us from all danger, from all harm. He has kept us in his love. And at every moment we see that his gaze is upon us. He never abandons us. He is always there, guiding us, protecting us, showing us the right path. He loves us. And for all this, let us praise Him, let us thank Him, and let us glorify Him. Lord, as we offer you this day, we ask you that you be with us. Help us to make the right decisions. Help us to do the right things so that we too may become worthy instruments, that we may be worthy workers in your vineyard. And therefore, my dear friends, let this day be a day of joy and blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, let us now reflect and meditate on Psalm 63. As usual, we shall have a general overview of the psalm and then we shall take a look at the psalm in detail. And Psalm 63 is a psalm of David expressing his deep longing and thirst for God's presence. And here we see that there is a longing to place unwavering trust in God's steadfast love. Therefore, it is believed to have been written by David when he was in the wilderness of Judah, especially during the time when he was fleeing from his enemies. And therefore, we see that the psalm can be divided into four main sections. Now, the first section is found in verses 1 to 2, which speaks of a fervent longing for God. Now, the second section can be found in verses 3 to 8. And here is a description of God's steadfast love and 
his provisions. The third section, verses 9 to 11, will speak of a declaration that he needs to place his faith and trust in God. And finally, in verse 11, we have a vow to praise God. And therefore, when you have a general overview of Psalm 63, we see that it beautifully expresses David's deep longing for God, longing to be in God's presence and longing to put his whole faith and trust in God. And therefore, we see that David here expresses his unwavering trust in God's steadfast love and protection. Now, this psalm also serves as a reminder of the importance of seeing God earnestly, finding satisfaction in God and God alone, and most importantly, the need to praise God continually for all that he does for us in our lives. Now, the psalm also inspires a genuine desire for intimate communion with God and a confident reliance on his faithfulness in the midst of trials and challenges. And now let us go into the details of the psalm. Now the first verse goes like this, O God, you are my God, early will I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my flesh longs for you, in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Quite an interesting way of beginning the psalm. Here we see that David begins with a heartfelt declaration of his relationship with God and here he is trying to express his deep longing for God, comparing it to a thirst in a dry and weary land. And you can compare this to especially moments when you feel thirsty, you are in search of water, throat is dry. And there is this longing for water. Even the sight of water quenches. And therefore, the same thing can be applied to David's longing for God. And here we see that David's soul and flesh yearn for the presence of God, recognizing that it is only God who can satisfy his spiritual and physical needs. And therefore, verse 2 goes like this. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary, to see your power and your glory. Now in this second verse, we see that David reveals his desire to behold God's power and glory. He seeks God in the sanctuary, the place of worship and divine presence. Thus here we see that David is longing to experience God's manifestation and he wants to witness the mighty powers of God. Now in the Second section that goes from verses 3 to 8, it goes something like this. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus, I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul should be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. And in this section, we see that David reflects on God's steadfast love and provision. He therefore acknowledges that God's loving kindness is better than life itself. And this leads David to commit himself to praise God with his lips, with his actions, and thus lifting his hands in worship to God. Because he says that the words of the God are so great, the works of God, the actions, the deeds are so great that it evokes him to praise and thank the Lord for all that he has been doing. And therefore we see that David finds deep satisfaction and joy in God. His entire solace and security is in God. And therefore... Here we see that David meditates on God day and night and he rejoices in the shelter that God provides him. And here we have the imagery of finding shelter in God's wings. Here we see that David will declare his unwavering devotion and trust in God 
acknowledging that God's right hand upholds and sustains him. Now in verses 9 to 10, go like this. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. And here we see that in this section, David shifts his focus to his enemies. And here David places all his faith, trust and confidence in God's protection. He declares that those who seek to harm him will ultimately face destruction and they will be defeated. In contrast, we see that David as the king will rejoice in God. He declares that those who swear by God will find glory while those who speak lies will be silenced. And this moves us or brings us to the final verse of the psalm. Verse 11 which goes like this. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory. But the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Here the psalm concludes with a final affirmation of praise and glory to God. Therefore David declares that he is the one who needs to place his faith and trust in God. David declares that as the king, he will rejoice in God. He acknowledges that those who do the will of God will find glory, but those who wander away from the Lord will ultimately meet their destruction. And in this way, we see that the psalm encourages us to place our faith and confidence in the Lord. And therefore, my dear friends, let us spend a few moments in silence, reflecting on this psalm. Maybe a word or a thought or a verse would have touched us. We may have been inspired by something that we have heard. Remain with that. Allow it to take root in you. And therefore, as we spend these moments in silence, let these thoughts or this verse take root in you. Go once again back to it and try to see what the Lord is communicating to you through that verse, through that thought. And therefore, allow the psalm to take root in you so that ultimately your words, actions and thoughts may become just like the ones of Jesus, spreading and building the kingdom of God on earth. Prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of of the heavenly host by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy O Sacrament Divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude Prayer for Souls in Purgatory Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union 
with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory for sinners everywhere for sinners in the universal church those in my own home and within my family amen may the divine assistance remain always with us and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of god rest in peace amen glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen